Hail, it's Stasi, and today we are going to be doing an August wrap up of everything I watched in that month. And usually I combine my reading and watched wrap up into the same video. However, I watched a lot more than usual in August, and I also ha had more footage than I usually have for the reading section, even though I read less than the past two months. So I don't know how that works, but all the same, I'm gonna put it in a separate video so that we don't have like one hour long wrap up. So with all that out the way, let's just talk about some of the things that I watched in August. I'm going to my letterbox because I can't keep track of the movies I watch otherwise, so trying to remember all the TV I watched is gonna be an effort, but starting with the movies. The first thing, oh, oh, so, so, the movie that I watched and watched again and rewatched again the most as a child, although I watched Anastasia a lot too, hmm, hmm, which is funny just because of the fact that uh, that's my full name, but no, we're not getting off track again. The mo one of the movies I watched the most as a child it was Quest for Camelot. The other movies I think I watched the most as a child was Anastasia and Grease, which <laughs> watching Grease now is is interesting because it's you, you don't realize how sexualized Grease is uh, as a child. But Quest for Camelot. I feel like this is one of the most underhyped animated movies. Although I don't, I gave it five stars on Letterboxd. Look. But that is a nostalgic five stars. I don't necessarily think it's the best movie out there, but it's still a very enjoyable animated movie. Quest for Camelot, obviously set in Camelot during Arthurian times, which again, it is a theme for me that anything that is a retelling of any kind of myths, fables, fairy tales, all of that kind of stuff is an interest, is instantly makes me more interested. My favourite Disney movie is Hercules, despite the fact I'm also that person who can go through the entire movie telling you everything that's inaccurate about it. I digress. It is a story where the sword, Excalibur, where Excalibur gets taken and lost and our main character essentially goes on a quest to get it back and help Arthur save the kingdom. And I love this movie. Again, very nostalgic love for how many times I watched it as a child, but it's just got some fun characters and music and the story is fun. But yeah, you've got a blind main character, you have a strong female main character, you have dragon siblings, which are a lot of fun. And uh, I don't know. It's very nostalgic and very fun for me. And it's not one, it's one that, you know, does not get the attention that Disney does or even other movies like Anastasia do. Then we watch Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl. What are four and a half stars on Letterboxd? Uh, again, I, I love the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. When I was a teenager, I've talked about before how I had a huge vampire phase, uh, which this shelf is partially connected to, although Twilight was not really part of my vampire phase because I didn't like the vampires in Twilight, although I read it at the same time and I did. Anyway, let's not get off topic about all my mixed feelings about Twilight, I've talked about that enough. But I went through a huge vampire phase, but the other phase I went through that actually slightly predated my vampire phase even was Pirates. And I'm pretty sure Pirates of the Caribbean is a big reason for that. I enjoy these movies so much, especially this first one. It's just, it's just so much fun and there's so much going on. And I love all the characters of Pirates of the Caribbean. And this one, this first one particularly has that spooky element that I enjoy because like zombie pirates doesn't necessarily sound like the greatest thing, but like is executed so well in this movie and I just love it a lot. I also had like the most generic answer ever years ago when someone told me who my favourite movie character was and I said Jack Sparrow and majority of the other people in the room also said that. But I'm not sorry. And honestly, if next time someone asks me about my sexuality, just look at the three main characters of this franchise. All three of them. <laughs> Do I need to say anything about what Pirates of the Caribbean is about? Surely not. 
Surely not. Pirates. Pirates. Don't be pirates. Kick ass characters. Lots of fun. Then we watched Project Power, which is a new Netflix movie, I believe. I gave three and a half stars. I thought it was I thought it was a good movie, but I wasn't in love with it personally. But like there was so much good about it. Part of the concept of Project Power is there there is like th these pills, this drug that can give people powers. And it's you know, you don't know what power you would get until you've taken it. And so that's kind of the concept behind it. And then there's all this stuff going on about them trying to shut down the people who have the drugs and there's all this other stuff. Honestly, I don't even remember half of what was going on. You've got some you've got some big name actors in here and the acting's like you've got some really good acting in here. You've got some great action, interesting story concept. I was also kind of pleasantly surprised to see to see that majority, like a lot of the main characters in here were black and also weren't like the typical black people you see because Hollywood will often cast light skinned people. It's not really my conversation to have, but it is something that I acknowledge. And I also loved Teenage Girl, who was the main character in this. And like when she asked, when they had a discussion about what her superpower would be, her rapping, and then she like showed off how good she was at coming up with lines and I, I really did really enjoy that. I, I did think this was a good movie, it just, I didn't love it. I don't know what it was that made me not love it. I like things, I don't know, I think it's because I like, I really like things that are either really kind of spooky, really dark, or I like things that are just over the top fun. And so I don't know whether the reason I didn't love this was just because it doesn't fit into one of those categories so it wasn't quite my taste but I still thought it was a good movie you know then it was Scallywagathon which is a pirate themed readathon and so uh, to go along with this I wanted to continue watching and getting my boyfriend to watch with me Pirates of the Caribbean so we did watch the next two movies that week so we watched Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man's Chest which I gave three and a half stars I think this is of the original trilogy I think this is my least favorite and I don't, can't entirely pinpoint why. It's still a lot of fun. So I don't really know. I don't know. I love this trilogy as a whole. This is probably my least favorite. Then I watched The Shining. The 1980s The Shining. Which I'd actually never seen before. Which may be surprising. Given, uh, you know, I've watched a lot of horror. But I'd never seen it before. And the problem I had with this movie. These are things that make me question my own head. But the sound that was throughout this movie there was these sounds in this movie that were just making me feel so physically uncomfortable like these kind of high-pitched noises and I, they were making me so physically uncomfortable i found it very difficult to concentrate on anything else that happened in the movie and so outside of like a few scenes that i remember like the classic friggin tricycle bike thing down the hallway i don't know how much i could actually tell you about what happened in this movie and so yeah, I'm not in love with it, and judge me all you want, horror people. Then we watched Doctor Sleep, which is the sequel that was released last year, and I was expecting this to be, like, awful, because I'd seen so many negative things said about it, but I actually enjoyed it. Like, I gave it three stars, so I didn't think it was, like, top tier, but I did really enjoy it, and just... I've never read the books for either of these, I will say, so I don't have that perspective to come from, but I did still enjoy Doctor Sleep overall, and I don't know what more I have to say, honestly. And then we watched Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End. So, the third in the Pirates of the Caribbean trilogy, because honestly, we don't need to talk about any of the movies beyond that. Although I don't think I've seen the most recent, no, I haven't, I haven't. I definitely watched the fourth movie in cinemas and didn't think much of it, but I don't think I've ever watched the one that was released after that. But anyway, Pirates of the Caribbean Trilogy is great. <laughs> okay, this one, four out of five stars. They're fun. They're lots of fun. They're lots of fun. Elizabeth Swan taking power. We love to see it. Then we did actually watch quite a bit of TV, like quite a lot of different TV, which we haven't really done previously because we've often been just kind of watching one long series for a while. I think I still did watch some of Supernatural, but not a lot of it, because we watched a bunch of other stuff. So what? I feel like a bunch of new stuff came out that we watched. So we watched the most recent season of Umbrella Academy, 
that's something we watched so I can't really say much about it without spoiling the first season can I but you know first season Umbrella Academy you've got a bunch of kids with powers who were raised together as siblings and then exploring how messed up they are as adults basically <laughs> they're all so messed up the second season follows on from the events of the last one and I did really enjoy this to the extent that did I? Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure I watched the entirety of the season in one night. My boyfriend didn't like it that much. He said it was it was disappointing, it wasn't as good as the first season, and he walked out and stopped watching it. But I binged the entire thing in that one night. So I was clearly interested enough to do that. So I did still enjoy it. It's just, just such an interesting cast of characters and the you know, seeing what happens with all their different powers and everything too. I, I do it was still interesting to me. What else came out that we watched? There was something else that was released, I feel. Oh, Lucifer. We also watched the most recent season of Lucifer, which I'm so mad about how that ended. Now, I will say, I don't think Lucifer's a good show. Personally, I don't think it's a good show, but I do think it's a very enjoyable show to watch. The acting can be a bit, uh, some of the storylines can be a bit, eh. Uh, it definitely gets very silly at points, but it's an enjoyable thing to watch. You know, the literal devil here on earth getting up to his shenanigans. It is a fun show to watch. I did enjoy watching the recent season, but yeah, I'm frustrated about what happened the last, the last episode, because it's now, now it's like, how long do we have to wait to see what happens now? I hate when you do that. I can't really say anything about that without spoilers, but that was enjoyable. We started watching Korra, which we've already finished, which technically we finished it in September, but we're only four days in. I might as well mention it now rather than waiting till next month, because we watched the entirety of Korra within like five days or something. I'd never seen it before. My boyfriend, however, Avatar is like his favorite show ever, and we watched we watched The Last Airbender last year, which was my first time watching through it, and then we just watched Korra, which I think I might actually like Korra more. I don't, I th and I think a lot, I think a lot of that ties down to like the family elements that are explored in Korra. And like, probably my favorite characters that are friggin' are the airbender kids. I just, I don't know. This show was a lot of fun. It had a lot of some interesting characters. I really like the art style. <laughs> but then it also explores such bigger themes within that, uh, which is interesting as well. And my boyfriend cried multiple times. He cried, I think he cried twice when we were watching it. And he was just like, it's such a proud moment. And you know, how many times has he watched through this series at this point? Multiple, and he's still crying. You know, it, it, there's a lot going on. Emotional stuff, it's, it's, Cora's great. I will say that it's not, the one thing I knew about Cora going in, which m minor spoiler territories, I guess, but it, you know, the, the internet exploded about the fact that Cora is bisexual, right? However, that's not ever actually made explicit in the show. At th the last episode is very vague in a way that you could interpret it that way, but it's never explicit. I'm, it becomes explicit in the graphic novels, I'm pretty sure, but the show, it's not explicit, and so I don't think it's the the amazing thing that people seem to make it out to be. It didn't feel like. But outside of that, really enjoyed Korra. Don't know what to do with myself now that it's over, because I can't watch it anymore. We also started watching, which I'm still watching, but we started watching it in August. Well, I started watching, well, we started watching it. Boyfriend was like, what the hell is this? Now I'm mostly watching it alone and messing up my own mind because we started watching Hannibal Which If you know you've ever seen Silence of the Lambs or any of the other multiple media or I believe their Their characters originally based on books. I can't remember what the books are called. Hannibal is a cannibal and This show ex this show explores him before he was ever caught essentially and the first season, the first season is really just like, a, a, how do you describe them? A serial crime drama? Is that the term we'd use? Where they're, you know, turning up new crimes and you've got this character, Will Graham, who is helping them to psychologically profile serial killers, essentially. And then 
Hannibal is also there consulting as he is a psychiatrist. So you've got this double, you're following these two things of like the episode to episode crimes that are being explored and revealed and then you've also got the undercurrent of Hannibal and the messed up things he's doing as well as how he is messing with other people's heads and boy is this show messed up. It is so dark and twisted. It's also, you know, very gruesome and gory, but like, you know, that's neither here nor there. It, it's the dark, twisted mind... How do I say that without swearing? Because I don't swear. Mind messery. <laughs> oh, and I've been binging it, which is really not good for my head. I've been watching hours on end of it during the day. <laughs> and that's also why I was watching Cora, because I needed something lighter at night to try and save my mind <laughs> but boy is that messed up but it's also interesting <sighs> anyway Animal's a good show I just wouldn't recommend binging it like I've been doing it is so dark and messed up <laughs> the imagery and the way this movie this this show is shot too is interesting it's kind of simultaneously beautiful and horrifying as well because there's such like an artisticness to it and god it's creepy it's creepy the boyfriend wanted to start re-watching the witcher so i think we watched the first episode or two of witcher uh again which i do really enjoy the witcher show and i did really enjoy the first book which is the only one i've read so far i think that's been pretty much it i don't know all i can think about is Hannibal messed upness or Cora because I loved that show and I'm sad that it's over and I really need to get the graphic novels because I'm not ready to be finished with it. The thing like I have Goodreads to keep up with my books, I have Letterboxd to keep up with my movies. I got this other app to try and keep up with my TV but, be but because we tend to just like binge episodes it's just too difficult and yet I don't remember anything. There could very likely be other things we watched on Netflix that I just don't remember. You're right, we watched the most recent season of Seven Deadly Sins, which is like a fantasy anime and does suffer from some of the things that unfortunately are in like almost every anime it seems, like over-sexualization of women and things like groping without consent, which is real uncomfy. But if you can get over those common anime things that uh, is a problem, but looking past it, it is a really fun series with lots of action and interesting characters and all that good stuff and it's one of my boyfriend's favorites so we watched that oh yeah they're the things that i can remember that we watched in august i'm honestly just excited for october because i want to try and do the same thing that i did last october which was to watch 31 spooky movies in 31 days so basically watching a spooky movie primarily horror every day of the month However, I think I'm going to have so much stuff going on in October, including helping to co-host a month-long readathon. I, I feel like <laughs> I'm planning too much for October, but like it's my favourite month because I love spooky stuff. It's a possibility I'll be working by then though. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. That's everything I watched in August, or that I remember watching. For the most part, I really enjoyed the majority of the things I watched, so we love to have a good media month because I also really enjoyed the majority of the things I read, which I'll probably be posting my reading wrap up before my movie wrap up, so maybe I'll link that somewhere. Have you watched any of the things that I watched this month? What did you think of them? What's your favourite stuff to watch? Let's talk in the comments. Yeah, stay safe. <laughs> Study out. Why did I even ever start doing that? I never consciously made the decision to have an intro and outro. They're just things I started saying, and I don't know why or where they came from. <laughs>